All right. Um, I think it's recording right now. So, uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for taking our time today to attend the fortnightly meeting for Chaos Asia. Uh, I'm Divya Mohan, um, the lead for Chaos Asia, and uh, we're governed by the uh, Chaos Code of Conduct. Uh, and uh, we typically have these meetings every um alternate Thursday. That is every fortnight. And um, it's it's um you know it's an area for um it's an avenue for people uh based out of Asia and Asia Pac to actually join in. So I'm sorry, um, got a bad cold as well. Uh, so we have a couple of agenda items for today. Although it looks like a lot, I promise we'll probably breeze through most of them, uh, since they're just majorly updates from my side of things, and um. What I really, really uh, want to be focusing on is um, the two initiatives that we uh, have in progress. Right? I mean, we've just started with it. So I would like more um, discussion around that. And of course, if you have any suggestions or any agenda items on your side, please feel free to enter them um, at the end and we will get to it. Um, because I promise uh, most of it that I've 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 written as updates are just like things that I want to let the broader community know about. So without further ado, I'm going to start off. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing is uh, that uh, I, I'm not going to make an assumption that everybody knows about the metric standardization initiative. Uh, but uh, Chaos has a bunch of metrics and metric models that uh, we are uh, developing or have developed to assess and measure community health and um, open source community and project health. So uh, we are sort of um, uh, uh, working with the JDF, which is the Joint Development Foundation, um, to get them standardized under the ISO process. And uh, one of the things that... Um, uh, the JDF and, uh, you know, other organizations who've already done this previously um, have actually communicated to us is that uh, we need to have more industry feedback um, and not just industry from the perspective of, you know, big corps, but uh, people who actually will utilize this project in the open source ecosystem. So they could be governments, they could be uh, people who spearhead DPG initiatives, they could be, um, you know, folks who uh, leverage them at Big Corps, anyone. So we've gotten a socialization opportunity, um, luckily through uh, Code for GovTech, who uh, um, you know we spoke to earlier on. And uh, we basically um, were invited by them for uh, a panel session uh, at DPG Dialogues. That is an upcoming... Um, <clears throat> event on October 9th and that will sort of uh, wrap up the whole program and um, they invited us to speak about uh, the metrics and the metric models that we've been developing and also uh, sort of how um, you know community building in an open source ecosystem um, outside of you know, maybe the ones that are centered around public goods and services can be widely different. So they want us to like provide a contextual overview and that will be part of a panel. So that is what is the update. And we were invited. And um, uh, I think even Ruth from Chaos Africa was invited. But since she's based in Africa and she probably cannot make it, uh, you know, details, T uh, T uh, TBD, we do not... Uh, know if we can make it, uh, if she can make it. Um, they also, you know, sort of invited um, both of us so that we can, one of us can actually make it and give more insights into the standardization and capacity building initiatives that we are working on. Um, I'm going to pause right there and see if anyone has any questions. Uh, what is the DPG dialogues? What do they do? Uh, so that's a very good question. Uh, DPG Dialogues is basically the, um, it's like the commencement or the uh, graduation, uh, like, you know, the program that you have at the 
uh, end of the graduation um, ceremony, right? Like where people from across the ecosystem come and give you insights and stuff like that. Um, so DPG Dialogues is like the, um, I think one of the last things they do um, as part of the Code for GovTech program. And Code for GovTech program is basically uh, spearheaded by Samagra. So these people work in the uh, uh, digital public good space wherein they um, develop open source uh, software and infrastructure for applications that run on uh, population scale in India. So um, in the Code for GovTech program, they engage various students and uh, various um, early career professionals through a mentorship program and help them get integrated with that uh, digital public good and digital public infrastructure uh, ecosystem. Uh, that is a small part of the open source ecosystem. Not everything is uh, <clears throat> open source or needs to be open source, but uh, in India it is. So uh, these these students um, have this like their end program, like the graduation ceremony sort of a thing at this program is what I have been told. Um, I think uh, uh, the one that I have linked here um, is uh, directing to a YouTube. It's like a seven hour video. <laughs> so watch it at your own risk and when you have a lot of time. Uh, so that was the previous DPG Dialogues. It was started in 2021, I believe. And uh, it's been going on till now um, um, along with the Code for GovTech program. So did that answer your question? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, any questions other than that? I'm going to take that as I well. Have, oh, okay. So, uh, when you are developing the metrics, have you sort of documented the process that you are taking to come up with the metrics? Uh, that's a good question. And um, we, I don't think, have a process documented per se because it's been a small group of people working on that. And it's in the, um, if, if you go on Slack, there is a WG Metrics development channel and there's also a GitHub repo that's dedicated to this. So typically how the whole process works is you just file an issue uh, with the uh, relevant information asked of you. Um, and once that's done, uh, there will be a discussion um, on the issue and at a meeting that's held again um, on a fortnightly basis. And the work is carried forward um, as, you know, as uh, in this in this manner. Uh, that's what I have understood and known um, in my brief time here. But yeah, that's... Uh, that's that's the brief like overview of how metrics development uh, are, takes place i could be um uh, slightly you know off when it comes to the actual development process because i've not been really involved i have uh, only been uh, a part of the standardization once i can talk to that but um, i can link the um, github repo for the metrics development so that you can go through it and I'll also give you the Slack channel. Does that uh, help? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Not a problem. Uh, any other questions? All right. So I will then move forward to um, the collaboration opportunities that we've um, you know, started branching out to. Um, so we, um, uh, again, this is something we were invited to, um, actually Elizabeth was invited to, and, uh, she passed on the invite to the, uh, Asian, like to me. And, um, this is something that, uh, I don't know if, um, y'all saw on the Slack channel as well, but it's a, a conference that's been sponsored by Ubuntu, um, uh, sorry, Canonical. I'm not saying Ubuntu. Uh, canonical and uh, a bunch of pe other people. And it's being held at IIT Kanpur. So 
we were invited to talk about the chaos project and the things that we were working on as part of it so that um, students at IIT Kanpur can get a broader overview of the things that we are working on and get integrated into the open source ecosystem if they want to. So I am not sure about the uh, deadline for this right now because I think it was yesterday. Um, I think I'm not really sure, but um, the virtual component is available. Um, if uh, people want to submit a CFP and talk about their experience or any of the cool projects that they're working on in the open source ecosystem. Um, I do believe uh um that there is one more thing um that uh, i have to update regarding this conference which is that we're also a community sponsor in the sense that we'll be partnering with them to amplify their message on all our forums um uh, especially uh given the reach that we have um so that's another uh, update regarding this particular conference uh so yeah, that's that's uh, uh, that's the update for this one. Uh, and I'm gonna pause here and see if you have any questions. Okay, I'm assuming there are none uh, because there was none asked. So, um, the next point actually ties into what I just said about community partnership um, with conferences uh, in general. Um, I, I feel like um, this is something we haven't explored yet. Um, and um, I think it would be beneficial for us to do that. Uh, but I also do want to take the consensus of this group um, before we go forward with any other conferences because um uh india first all these three conferences that i've listed here are uh, pretty much uh, local conferences uh, except cost cup uh, two of them are local conferences and we're able to sort of support a sync or one of the members is actually going to be there um but i would like this group's views on uh whether um, this is an actual direction we should be focusing our efforts on. And uh, by focusing our efforts, I don't mean that, uh, you know, we focus only on this. Uh, we have other things uh, that we work on. But um, I also think that it would help us build that uh, trust with the respective communities that are there in that region. And uh, it would be helpful for us to do that since we're not very well known um, currently, uh, given that we started in March. So is this something that the group here uh, thinks would be valuable? Um, I floated this by the uh, larger group as well, and they do think it's valuable. But I also want to understand this uh, set of people's opinion on uh, the topic. I'm going to pause here for a bit so that I can speak. I, I think this is a very wonderful initiative. I, I think it's one of the top institutions. So partnering with them is wonderful. Uh, it gives you it gives you a chance to let the students know about the wonderful work you are doing and to also get a chance to contribute to the open source ecosystem. And plus local conferences is always good, reducing the travel as well. They're reducing the travel time as well. So I think it's good from the environment point of view as well. Absolutely. So uh, tra so the travel logistics and everything currently, uh, since we're not really, uh, you know, we're not really working off of uh, sponsorship, like we're sponsored by the Linux. Uh, we're under the Linux Foundation and receive sponsorship from the Alfred Sloan uh, Foundation. Uh, we still don't have a lot of um, uh, regional scholarship to go by. So partnering with them virtually till we do have that sponsorship, I think is a good way to sort of establish trust as partners um, in the open source ecosystem. And I feel like that's, um, and even like with a virtual talk or maybe um, 
if you're at a local conference by actually going in person and presenting there about the project would be a helpful way to get more people involved um international conferences attending them would be great um i would love for uh, for us one day to go to cost or maybe uh the open source congress or something like that but um you know travel logistics really are uh uh not uh very well fleshed out given the nascency of the project um and the initiative so Till then, I feel like it would be a great way to sort of establish that uh, trusted working and partnership model. Um, so plus one to whatever you said, I guess. Uh, um, Leon, Michelle, do you have any uh, thoughts on this? I, I realize that you all are very quiet. So I just have like, uh, you know, I'm just pulling, putting you in the spotlight in case you do. So um, the opportunities that we have currently um, with regards to this, like one I told you about, that is the uh, Opportunity Open Source Conference uh, 2.0. Uh, we're already a community sponsor. And uh, Leon uh, kindly has agreed to uh, help with India first since he'd already be, I think, visiting there um, and, you know, speaking at the conference. So he's kindly agreed to do a workshop. Um, and uh, if uh, people in India would sort of like to attend uh, one of the weekly meetups that they have in different cities, uh, uh, please do because they do so on a Saturday. They congregate on a Saturday and uh, it really helps, um, uh, you know, network with the other open source enthusiasts in your city um, and, you know, talk to them. Uh, so if anyone's really interested in uh, attending and talking about chaos, you don't need to, but if you want to talk about chaos at some point, please let me know. I have like a slide deck ready that you all can leverage um, and you all can talk to rather than starting from scratch yourself. Um, it'll save you a lot of time and it will also help amplify uh, the word about our project. So if, if you ever want to speak to uh, chaos at any of the meetings in your city or even like the FOSS uh, meetups in your city, please uh, let me know. I'd be happy to sort of give you the material that you need to speak to. So those are the three things around the community partnership. Um, I'm just going to go down. And uh, so um, assuming that uh, there is Okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Sandeep, please go ahead. I did not notice your hand. Uh, so, uh, can you just tell me in brief about the workshop that Leon is taking? Like, what is the workshop and wha what kind of workshop is he taking and what is he going to cover in the workshop? So, that's a very good question. So, the um, workshop will be an introduction to uh, chaos, its metrics, and the processes that we have around this, and how you can potentially contribute to um, <clears throat> chaos as a as an open source project. Uh, so, if you've been around in the cloud native space, um, you would know that uh, in uh, the Kubernetes and probably the cloud native uh, ecosystem, you have these uh, new contributor workshops where we show you across the repos, we uh, walk you through all these, um, uh, you know, things that we do and um, talk about the hierarchy of, not hierarchy, but talk about the organizational aspects and uh, where you can partner um, with us and contribute to the project so um that's that's what i have like information about um and depending on the depth you're willing to delve into it could be a 20 minute presentation and it could be a proper one one and a half hour workshop um so that's one of the things that we're planning um of course i I'm very open to suggestions. If you have like suggestions on how uh, we could better improve the format of the workshop, but we've not done anything so far. Uh, and this is the 
workshop that I've been told has been conducted across other uh, geographies. So I'm just drooling with whatever has been sort of given to me as a, a you know template or a format. Does that make sense? And does that answer your question though? Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so um, just to give context, because I see Michelle has already uh, uh, started entering stuff on the crowdsourcing activity. So thank you, Michelle, for that context. Um, so essentially, if you've been part of these meetings, a couple of meetings back, uh, Roland actually suggested that um, similar to the... Um, Similar to one of the links, uh, if you scroll further down, you'll see the link. Uh, similar to one of the links that he had provided, we could essentially create an open source, um, uh, not open source, database of open source communities across Asia and uh, potentially extrapolate it to the wider open source ecosystem. So we've created a GitHub issue. And um, uh, when... I socialized this via the uh, chaos social media handles um, and shared it on the <clears throat> uh, channels themselves. Uh, so um, the, there was uh, there was the patch that happened and there's a conversation that happened with Michelle and her teammate or uh, um, Jyoti, I guess, uh, since they were working on something similar and uh, uh, Michelle, I'd like to hand it over to you to, uh, you know, continue the conversation around this because uh, you're more well-versed and it would be really helpful uh, to see where you are at um, with respect to this initiative on your side of things. Thank you and nice to meet you all. I'm Michelle Barker. I'm the director of the Research Software Alliance and um, yeah, I'm based in Australia. So first I wanted to say that the, the work I'm gonna talk about is all about research software uh, rather than open source software, but obviously there's uh, you know, some significant overlaps, but our focus is always on the research software or to some degree the open source scientific uh, software. Uh, so the potential key partner here in this conversation would be uh, RSE Asia, uh, which is led by Jyoti Bogle and Saranjit Kao. Um, so they're, I'm from an organization called Research Software Alliance, which is an internal, international organization, whereas they're from uh, the RSC Asia uh, organization with the Asian focus, and they're our community partner in here. And just to give you more context, so then Roland Osbergen's part of the Australia, New Zealand uh, conversation uh, around RSC, but he also works in the Asia Pacific kind of conversations about research software engineering as well. So just to tell you what had been happening in the research software space, uh, there was a group of international uh, research software engineers who started a, just did a prototype database about research software organizations globally. Uh, so if you wanted to reuse any of that idea, you'd be welcome to. At the moment, that idea is just kind of shelved. Uh, we need some more resourcing or support uh, to develop, but you know, potentially if your team are interested in doing something that there might be some opportunity to discuss with that team and kind of motivate everyone together. Uh, just historically, uh, we did a little bit of uh, mapping of some organizations in 2022 related to research software, but obviously some of them uh, would be open source software. So you can look at that database there. There might be some entries that are useful, although it is a bit dated. And just to let you know, I had also previously been involved in a project about funders of open source software. Uh, including some in Asia. And there's a public output, which is a toolkit if could be useful if you're ever talking to funders, but I have some of the not publicly released information about open source funders in Asia, if that's ever useful. Um, I, I can share someone with that pri privately, that listing, uh, if you wanna add funders to your database. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess we've kind of been thinking similar things, in, but in research software, but none of them are really active at the moment or, or yet. So there's, you know, some potential for doing uh, something uh, together, but we really need to get Jyoti primarily and to some extent Saranjit in the conversation uh, to see if it's something they really want to pick up and run with. So I will certainly take all this back uh, to them uh, and yeah, um, see if that's of interest. Definitely. And uh, 
thank you so much for uh, firstly you know jumping on this call um, and uh, for patching me with jyoti as well i look forward to uh, you know collaborating with them and uh, seeing if there are you know um, there is bandwidth first of all to act to accommodate this work uh, because i realize that all of us are really busy and uh, they might not have the bandwidth so uh, thank you for taking up this initiative to take this back to them um so one of the to one of the points that you mentioned that there could be um, overlap there definitely is i um intend to have all sorts of communities in that database like the intention is to have um, all sorts of communities, irrespective of, uh, you know, their nature, her, whether it's academic, whether it's research, um, whether it's, uh, you know, um, city clubs and stuff like that, which uh, are more prominent in um, India and in part, uh, Southeast Asia. So there's, there's different ways you go about you know, talking about communities in the open source space. And we really want like to have a curated database um, of communities we basically have um, knowledge about. And eventually that, that it will have a component where people can add in their own inputs um, with communities. So uh, like if, if they're part of a community that's not listed there, they can submit an issue and you know, add the community in. Uh, so uh, that, that is the end goal, but we need like a database to start with. Uh, and uh, for that, I think collaborating with y'all would be really helpful if y'all have the bandwidth. So yeah. Um, and uh, to your point, I think you've entered something else. Uh, do you really uh, want to talk about it? Uh, because yeah. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, it, yeah. Jody, you can get back to your on bed with that will be like shared decision. Uh, but just, yeah, another point that we're hoping to have a meeting in Japan uh, later next year um, to bring together a whole lot of players from across Asia to discuss research software. Uh, so we haven't got confirmation yet that it's going ahead, but if we do, it's a meeting we can invite 50 people to. It's only face-to-face -face in Japan. Uh, so we could certainly, you know, uh, talk to you then about who are the key people that we we need to ensure at that meeting. Absolutely. Like, oh, uh, whenever you have confirmation, yeah. I'm sorry. Whenever you have confirmation, uh, please let us know. We would be happy to see if our logistics are sorted out by then. We could sort of like let uh, let you know who can actually make it. Uh. So anyone have any questions firstly uh, around this so that, um, you know, while Michelle's here on a call, we can actually pick our brains about it. Yeah, I would just say generally it would be really great, I think, to build the links uh, because the research software terminology isn't really used much in, in this part of the world. So. Uh, you know, going through open source software is, is probably a, a useful way to have that conversation, or at least open source scientific software. Jody and Sarah and Jeet have already had a lot of conversations with the NRINs. They go to the N APAN meetings, they Pacific, Pacific, Pacific Events Network meetings every six months, and they've been talking about RSEs there. So they might have a birds of a feather session at either the next one in like October, November, or at the one in Japan in March next year, there's going to be a keynote on research software. Uh, so we're trying to uh, get um, some recognition there, but that's certainly a time we could mention uh, you know, that they could be mentioning and what, what's happening in your community as well to build uh, that relationship a bit further. Absolutely, that would be really helpful. And uh, just uh, just so everyone on this call is aware and has enough context about this initiative, um, as a community who congregated earlier on as well before this call, uh, what was decided is um, we would essentially start building out this uh, software through um, engagement with one of the um, <clears throat> programs, uh, outreach programs where we would engage an Asian or uh, international student, um, preferably Asian because they would have like more, um, um, I don't know, 
incentive to talk to uh, a lot more Asian communities and they'd probably have more context as well based out of Asia um, about open source communities. So the idea is to sort of build on that um, and um, partner with this program to have a person build this out. Um, and then we later on plan to have this as a full-fledged initiative uh, to and to extrapolate that database to a global context that we have more, um, you know, we have more uh, information around the various open source communities. It's a massive undertaking, which is by baby steps. <laughs> uh, we cannot really like jump to point z from point a so we like going baby step wise so the first one is to partner with the rgg program and that would i think start in august um applications at least for mentoring organizations uh which chaos will be hopefully uh would be in august and we plan to have people for uh, who uh, are local to asia and it is not a hard requirement, but it would just be more of an incentive uh, to have those people. So, yeah, uh, that's 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 the additional context that I felt I needed to share uh, because I'm not sure if everyone has that. Uh, just, again, pausing for any questions or suggestions that you might have. All right. Um, so another thing that I want to touch upon based on uh, the discussion we were having around this initiative is that we need to spread the word. Now, um, of course, going to the conferences that we all go to, we can definitely spread the word for sure. Uh, but are there any means, other means that you can think of um, via how we can spread the word around this initiative once we have like a formal database or how we can collect more information because on that github issue there's just one answer that i have that is force united and that's submitted by a student from india um so i would honestly love it if uh, there is another way uh, for us to get more responses on that so that when we curate the database there is at least a couple of entries on there i don't want it to be just like a database of one entry so is there something that we can do potentially? Maybe maybe we can reach out via LinkedIn via Twitter. That's a good idea. I have done that. Uh that, that and as a result of that, there's that one entry by the way. After like amplifying on Twitter and on LinkedIn, there's been the one entry that I got in. So I'm not sure how to like um phrase it any longer. And I'm open to suggestions uh, on how we could do it better. Like I see that uh, Michelle has actually entered in something. So uh, do you want to talk to that, Michelle? Did I? Did I? Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. But I just read it. I thought you meant I'd put something in the database. I was like, yeah, right. no, 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 no. Um, yeah, we can certainly advertise it uh, through Risa things. But yeah, we find a similar response race that when we ask for crowdsourcing, you know, at best we get one or two. So uh, it's more our team doing work uh, to, to uh, do a bit of searching and curation to add entries is usually how what we end up having to do. Yeah, and I really did think there would be more responses because I have a personal list that I have started curating on the um on the off chance, which is seeming like more of the reality right now on the off chance that nobody responded. And I have like a list already, but I really wanted there to be more responses on that issue because there are you know, communities that I'm not aware of. There are blind sides that I have uh, being limited to the, um, you know, geography that I'm limited to. So I would really appreciate any support that we can get um, in amplifying uh, more um, about this particular initiative, given that it's going to benefit the ecosystem um, once it's out there. Like, it's going to be a publicly available database. It's not going to be something that, you know, I have in a separate GitHub uh, repository that's private all to myself. So 
any any help that uh, anyone can offer up i would be open to suggestions and this need not be right on this call i i'm not expecting that um, all of our brains collectively work without coffee mine doesn't for sure uh, but uh, <laughs> but if uh, if there's any suggestion that you have please feel free to post it on the channel and uh, michelle uh, if we could sort of um um sort of like uh, amplify it via your social media newsletter that would be really helpful um uh, thank you for offering that up and i'll also try uh, groups like google developers because i do have a uh, local contact so i'm going to try via them but i just somehow thought that twitter and linkedin would do the trick but it doesn't apparently so yeah Ashan so Dumia. Yeah. We cannot ask the students here to post about it. Uh I could, but the thing is, um, like I said, we're a project under the Linux Foundation and CNCF is a foundation under the Linux Foundation. So there's like a um there's I mean I, I am a maintainer there and I would love more people from there to join in, but I don't think this is a particular interest uh, there. Like I could, I don't have a problem. Like I know several CNCF clubs that are there in various cities that I could add myself to the database. But um, those clubs also sort of do follow uh, my personal account and my um, LinkedIn profile. And um, I don't think they recognize themselves as open source like avenues of open source congregation really so um i'm happy to post it there but again i don't know what's the right forum uh where do i go and talk to it and uh, probably reaching out to the organizers of um uh, or the leads of the um kcds and uh, cncf clubs like the people at the cncf level who are working with the respective people would help yes sandeep uh yeah so uh so what i mean for that we come up with a social media post or we draft something and we ask the cncf to post in their linkedin profile because their linkedin profile has a very very wide range so That's they a post it. We, wow. we form the draft and then we ask them to post it that's a good point. I will explore that opportunity uh, because A, um, I don't know if there's a request form that I can fill out that they will actually amplify. So normally, um, as far as I remember, like Cube Weekly, which is their newsletter, they have like this thing um, where you fill out uh, pieces of content that you want amplified in their newsletter. But I haven't seen anything around their social media per se. So I will go and check with the CNCF. And um, if if you have any contact with these folks who can yeah. actually help amplify, I would be happy to, you know, let you take the lead because I am um I I genuinely don't have anybody in the social media team that's actually directly uh, in contact with me. So if you're sort of willing to take that on, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, yes, I think I might be able to help you out next week because uh, so we attended the CubeCon Europe as a, and as a part of Deaf and the Heart of Hearing Working Group. Uh, so the Deaf and the Heart of Hearing Working Group, uh, we came up with some videos, okay, some videos that showcase us like uh, I was uh, like my a bit of my interview and then for other people they were talking in sign language, okay. So then we, our team made a video and then the CNCF posted it. The CNCF right. posted it. Yeah, they posted it on the LinkedIn profile. Because I am posting it, I have like 1,500 people. The CNCF has like 125. Yeah. So there's a lot of difference. So maybe I think I could get to the social media contact by next week. That would be great. Um, And... um. Uh, one more thing uh, is that if 
if they want additional context or anything, I'd be happy to provide that to you as well. Um, I mean, I'm happy to let you lead the initiative on this one Um, to, you know, partner with uh, the CNCF to figure out if they can amplify. Uh, given that, um, you know, we would need help here um, in amplifying our um, initiative. Um, our social media simply does not seem to cut it. Individual one definitely does not, for sure. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Michelle, I see that you've written something again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to continuously put you on the spot, but uh, yeah, that's all right. Uh, yeah, I was just suggesting a couple of podcasts, uh, you know, which are based in US and Europe. So most of the listeners might be in those regions. So they mightn't help you get entries into the database, but they might just be a good chance to talk about your work more globally and to boost your credibility by saying, you know, we've been part of international conversations promoting this. Just an idea I can introduce you to the coordinators of those who are helpful. Yeah, that would be really helpful too. Thank you so much for that offer. Um, boosting, I think, credibility is important because um, uh, a, it's a very nascent initiative. Like I said, this was uh, earlier scoped to only China, uh, which is not a bad thing. But uh, having restarted this initiative, we've uh, lost a lot of those former members, primarily because they are can we uh, they are more comfortable convening in um um uh, uh, meeting format that's more um localized, and they prefer having like conversations in the local language, which is great. But that also restricts visibility to the outer world. So this was not even popular uh back then. So having to restart this from scratch and having to boost the credibility is um, a lot of things that I cannot do all by myself. So any help that I said, like I said before, that comes through, I'm happy to sort of, you know, I'm happy to uh, take it on and I'm grateful to you for that. All right, so I'm going on to the next point uh, in the interest of time. So another collaboration opportunity that we've had uh, in terms of, um, you know, specific to the Indian context, because um, I've not had a lot of reach outside of that, except with the Japanese folks. Um, so uh, I am going to be speaking to folks at the Takshashila Institution. Um uh, since they also also have like this course around open source public policy, like tech public policy, but uh, focused on open source in India. Um, and the metric standardization initiative that we're taking, um, uh, undertaking currently uh, would likely steer um, the course of uh, policy making in uh, India around open source. So I feel like Having that conversation with uh, people who are um, policy commenters, if not uh, policy makers, would be helpful in gaining broader context. And of course, just socializing our work um, in different avenues. So I'm going to have that conversation. was actually supposed to do that yesterday, but uh, the time did not uh, sorry, sort of match. So... Um, uh, we did not have it yesterday, but we will be having it before the upcoming meeting in the next week, next fortnight. So, yeah, I'm going to pause there uh, and see if anyone has any questions or suggestions before I move on. Okay, so the last bit that I have from my end, I think, um, is um focused around uh one topic that i spoke of um and that roland had actually facilitated the conversation around uh last time we were here which is um conversations around accessibility uh for um you know especially able disabled or uh, differently able folks so um <clears throat> I've led the dialogue around this with the CNCF's um, deaf and hard of your in working group. Um, and uh, Sandeep, you're joined uh, because I've dragged him into it uh, pretty much. Um, unfortunately, he cannot ex escape my clutches anywhere. Um, so um, I've, I've, I've reached 
part of them there's been interest um however like um today you'll see the live captioning going on there needs to be additional accommodation made and uh, it's it's sign language interpreters with um, uh, one set of disabilities but there's more accommodation to be made throughout the project if people have to join in and make contributions that are meaningful to them and forge a path that is meaningful to them in the open source ecosystem um so Towards that, this will need to be like a sub initiative uh, for which the issue has been created. And um, as with all sub initiatives, I would really like someone um, to lead it instead of, you know, me just going everywhere and spreading myself too thin um, and trying to, you know, do it all. So would anybody be interested in leading it? Yes, Sandeep. Oh, I should do, yeah. So even though like I don't use sign language, I rely only on the captions. Yeah. But uh, when I'm attending other meetings, uh, like as a part of the deaf and hard of hearing working group, there are always some sign language interpreters. Always. So it's possible that, maybe it's possible that CNCF already has a tie up victim or something. I'm not sure. But I could check and get back to you on whether, like, if you want to have an interpreter for your meeting, how to facilitate it, how to have it, I could check and get back to you. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, I did check with Catherine, but uh, I don't think Catherine herself has the visibility. So if you could check with uh, the CNCF folks, that would be really helpful. Uh, I'm also driving conversations on the side with the wider chaos project. Um, if we could have like a focus group, not a focus group, a working group dedicated to this. Um, and, you know, we could have uh, like chapters interlinking um, so that uh this um this whole accommodation bit around you know facilitating sign language interpreters and maybe something else that i really do not have insights about uh we we have the um adequate means and uh, logistics to get around to that uh because uh cncf might have engaged the sign language interpreters but um it's not one set of disabilities alone that we are catering to. There's so much more. And um, Chaos Africa has started a chapter slash event of, not chapter, an initiative, a sub-initiative of their own. Uh, so um, they have something of their own going on. So I just feel like it would be worthwhile um, bringing together chapters and having a working group at the helm, but also... Uh, you know, having these separate focused um, initiatives within the regional chapters. Yes, Sandeep, please go ahead. There's one more thing I forgot to mention. And so that is, so like uh, the sign language also varies from country to country. Correct. Yeah. So the ones that we have are American sign language. Okay. But if the people who are joining our group are mostly Indian or maybe like Asian. Uh, we have to see what is the familiarity with American Sign Language. Okay. Because if we have an American Sign Language interpreter and the people are Indian Sign Language users, it may not be compatible. Correct, so, yes. Yeah, it's a bit of challenge. So just like you are building like a database of research projects here, like to open, we are building a database of Sign Language interpreters. And then, uh, they are not familiar with technical terms, so we also have to take that into account. So, I mean, it's a bit challenging, but we can get started. Absolutely. So, um, which is why, like I said, this is a massive sort of an initiative. And uh, as with all others, I would not be able to just do justice to it if I take it on myself and uh, then say, 
oh, you know what? I'm going to do this and the second thing and the third thing. And then I make a mess of all of it. So um, which is why I was looking out for any um one who's interested in driving it and becoming uh, the sole point, not sole point of contact in the sense that uh, once you take on the initiative, we are going to just keep you on the side and not listen to you or anything like that. But they would be responsible for driving the conversations around this with the larger community and with major stakeholders. So would anybody be interested? Uh, Self-nominations are welcome. You can think about it and uh, chime in um, on the issue or, you know, communicate it on the channel or you can let me know right now. But um, please, please do have a think about it because it's important that we sort of um, widen our... Uh, you know, initiative outside of like just people who can actually contribute in a standard way. We have to include people uh, and need to include people for more diverse perspectives. So that's that's my two cents. And I think we're also at the um, end of my agenda. So if there's anything that anybody wants to talk about or suggest or have as part of the agenda items, please let me know. Uh, I'll pause for a bit so that you all can start talking. Okay, I am assuming everyone's caffeine ran out pretty fast there. Um, so I am just going to let you all get on with your day and uh, sort of like refresh yourself potentially before your next meetings. Um, so thank you everyone for joining once again. And if you all have any um any thoughts about any of the things that we mentioned today, um, please do feel free to get in touch on the Chaos Asia Slack channel. Um, or if you're not comfortable sharing it publicly, please do let me know on the DM as well. We can discuss further if it's regarding the nominations or something else that you want to speak about. Happy to chat further about any of them. But for now, I will let you all get on with the rest of your day. And thank you so much. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Bye.